When my son Lex turned five, we went on a dad trip into the mountains, but I promised him there wouldn't be much driving. Day one, I broke that promise, and a couple of hours in, I said, Lex, kiddo, I'm sorry we've been driving for so long, but let's keep going to the top of the mountain. It'll be quick and fun, and that way we won't have to drive at all tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Well, when we get to the top of the mountain, we both feel sick from the altitude. Taking two days up would have been the smart plan. Lex, buddy, why don't we go down the other side of the mountain? I think it'll only be about another 30 minutes, and I'll drive quickly, and that way we'll both feel better. I promise. But the road down is long and windy, and of course it starts to pour with rain. So now an hour in, but near the bottom, Lex says, Dad, I think I'm going to throw up. Just breathe, Lex. Look at the horizon. You'll be fine. Trust me. Five times he throws up all over himself. Then says, Dad, can we stop and clean me up, please? Lex... We're 10 minutes from the hotel. As soon as we get down, I'll clean you up, I'll slow down, and you won't throw up again. I promise. Well, after breaking a string of promises, I finally keep one that matters. I get him down, he doesn't throw up again. And we clean him up and go for ice cream, and that vanilla ice cream saves the day. But a couple of days later, when he's telling his younger sisters about our trip, he looks at me and says, Dad, remember the part where you didn't trust me? Where you didn't love me? Where you let me sit in my own vomit? That really got to me. Because I realized that the promise that I had made him, even though I kept my word, well, I failed to do what really mattered to him get out the car in the rain and clean him up so that I could give him back his dignity. It really wouldn't have taken that much. Knowing this, how much do you trust me? And if I promise you that this talk will change your life, would you trust that promise? And what does it mean to be trustworthy anyway? I didn't mention I'm a salesperson. I know with a smile it looks like I'm hiding something, but I'm also an entrepreneur and an aspiring performance poet. And I teach at a world-class business school. Now how much do you trust me? And what do you trust me to do? The truth is I don't know if you trust me at all or how that might have changed as you're getting to know me. And if I don't know what you trust me to do and how that changes over time, well, maybe you shouldn't trust me at all. But if you're kind enough to do so anyway, I promise to share with you the one idea that's changing my life as we speak. And my intention is that it'll change yours too. Only responsible promises made and kept guarantee that we build trust. Let me say that again. Only responsible promises, made and kept, guarantee that we build trust. A regular promise is what we say we'll do, but a responsible promise begins after that by asking the one question I wish I'd ask Lex that day. What else do you trust me to do? That question is at the heart of the responsible promise habit and is your key to becoming the most trustworthy person you know. Why care? Well, we've all felt the hurt of broken promises in our personal lives. To paraphrase Nietzsche, I'm not upset that you broke your promise. I'm hurt that now I can't trust you. So we know that trust in business is just as critical as trust in our personal lives. And when I started my first company in my early 20s, I asked my mentor, And she said, Andrew, to build trust, under promise, over deliver, and document everything. So of course, when I come to pitch my first mega deal to one of the world's largest companies, I ignore most of her advice because I trust myself to make huge promises, but I do document every single one in minute detail. Luckily, the big promise works and we win the deal 
that'll put us on the map, provided we deliver. Now, I trust my team. And I don't mind saying they do amazing work. And I get to present the results to the board. On the big day, I go to see my client, Johan, at his offices. He's six foot four, scary huge to look at. But maybe one of the most mild-mannered men I've met. Luckily, I'm a bouncy 22-year-old. I'm wearing my purple suit, and I'm brimming with enough self-confidence for the both of us. When we finally called in, Johan tiptoes into the boardroom, whispers my introduction to the board. Twelve grumpy old men in shabby gray suits, sipping high tea. So we chat politely for a couple of minutes, and then I'm up. Now, you may be thinking that I blow it, but I don't. I crush the presentation. I breathe life into the results with my stories. For my peers de resistance, I explain to them exactly how to save more money than the GDP of a small country. And for my grand finale, I outline the glorious future I see for them. Then I thank them because my mom taught me really good manners. And I end by saying, gentlemen, I'd be so honored if you guys take the next steps with us. Drop the mic, leave, crush it. So the next day I can hardly keep still from excitement when I go to see Johan because the next phase of the work will be huge. But before I can even sit down, Johan says, Andrew, I'm so sorry, I tried to call you, but you've been fired by the board. What? I did blow it. I have no idea how. I'm stunned, but I don't intend to be speechless. Johan, did they get how smart the solution is? Did they understand just how much money we can save you? Oh, they did. And intended to do exactly as we recommended, on their own, or with someone else. They hadn't even decided that yet. They just knew they didn't want to work with me. Why? I had to know, so I asked. Johan, did we break a promise? I mean, we kept every condition and met every deadline, and then some. He listens quietly, then says, Andrew, I'm afraid that you were fired for bad manners. Bad manners? Now I'm humiliated, and that quickly turns to anger at the board. What exactly did I do wrong? Did I sip your tea wrong? I have to know, so I ask. Andrew, yesterday you referred to the board as you guys. I'm sorry, but nobody calls them you guys and gets away with it. Well, that stings and honestly feels ridiculously unfair. And I feel like I want to throw up. I feel like Lex because now I have to tell my team that I blew this enormous deal over this tiny thing. But a couple of hours later when I finally calmed down, I realized I had disrespected them. I did have bad manners from their point of view. The only one that matters. They trusted me to treat them a certain way and I broke that trust. Still that night, the loss of the deal felt like Punishment that didn't fit the crime. As Kevin Plank said, trust is won in drops, but lost in buckets. Now, how much do you trust me? Breaking our spoken or our contractual promises, that destroys trust, and that much is obvious. But being trustworthy, that's a completely different thing. You see, being trustworthy is choosing to do what other people trust you to do, even though they haven't told you yet. And I know that's unfair, but the responsible promise habit is how we can respond to what is or what feels unfair. Being judged as untrustworthy for keeping your word, but failing to do what someone trusted you to do. So think of the responsible promise habit as your secret weapon, your golden opportunity to become the most trustworthy person you know. How? Well, whenever you make a promise, and we do every day to our kids, to our peers at work, simply ask, 
what else do you trust me to do? I promised you that this talk will change your life. But for that to be a responsible promise, I have to ask you, what else do you trust me to do? Then listen like my life depends on it. And if necessary, have an expectations conversation so that what you now trust me to do and my responsible promise are a perfect match. But the responsibility goes both ways. If you make me a promise, I can have the courage to say to you, may I share with you what else I trust you to do? Then tell you as clearly, as fiercely, and as honestly as I can. Hemingway said, the best way to find out if you can trust someone is to trust them. But I disagree. I think the best way is to tell someone exactly what you trust them to do, then trust them to do just that. Because that alone will change your life, I promise. So here's what I trust you to do. In the next 48 hours, I challenge you to have three responsible promise conversations with people that you trust. All you have to do is ask one question. What else do you trust me to do? In this case, with my life. Or if you prefer, you can ask, who do you trust me to become? For your first conversation, choose someone from your community. It could be a trusted coworker or a mentor. Anyone whose perspective on you, knowing who you are and what you're capable of, might inspire you. It could even be someone from history. For example, I chose Hector Peterson, someone I never knew, long dead, but still remembered by an entire country. We grew up 20 miles away from each other, but worlds apart in racially divided apartheid South Africa. Here's why I chose him. A couple of months back, I had to sit down with Lex and his younger sisters to talk to them about a nearby mass shooting while it was happening. Seeing the fear in his eyes and hearing him ask, Dad, why would he do that? That left me powerless to explain. But it did remind me of the only mass shooting I'd ever heard of as a kid growing up in South Africa. And so I chose Hector Peterson, the first victim. And I captured my reflections on that imagined responsible promise conversation in a poem, Hector Peterson. There were chocolate eclairs and double dares at my fifth birthday party on a sunny summer day. Twelve white kids in apartheid South Africa with zero cares. But in that same year, in Soweto, not far away, a 12-year-old black kid, Hector Peterson, was killed shot at his school during a protest over the simplest right to be taught in his own language. And when his blood spilled, it sparked riots that cost thousands of lives in that racist fight. Hector, who now do you trust me to become? When kids here too are shot at their school, what responsible promise can I make to them, to my own kids, and to you? When the racism that robbed you of your life is still so cruel, what do you expect me to do as I teach at a school too? So, who will you choose from your community whose perspective on you inspires you? For your second conversation, come a little closer to home and choose someone that knows you really well. Someone that loves you unconditionally and that always sees or always saw the greatness in you. I chose my mom, Adele. She had wonderful manners and was a very proper woman, but on special occasions she would enjoy a glass or two too many of champagne. I'll never forget the look on her face the day I graduated. Through champagne-fueled giggles, I saw only tears of pride. And I knew she would always be my greatest fan. So, of course, I chose my mom, Adele. My mom, Adele, the mother of eight. I'm the youngest. A late mistake. When I did well, she saw only great, but when I screwed up, I felt her heartbreak. 
she died from cancer and a life of strife. So never got to see the promises of my life. Many made, many broken, many kept. How I've hurt others, how I've grown and how I've wept. If you were here today to kiss my baby girl twins, to see my life and cuddle Lex, my son, to see my proudest moments as a dad and as a man, my greatest sins, mom, who would you trust me to become? Paolo Coelho said, because you believed I was capable of behaving decently, I did. So who will you choose who loves you unconditionally and has always seen everything you're capable of in life? Because once you've had those two responsible promise conversations, the last one is with you. You'll find that the first two are your invitation to greatness, but the one with you will determine whether or not you accept those invitations. I've been writing poetry in private for years now, but without the conversation with my mom, I wouldn't have had the courage to share even a few words with you today. Without the conversation with Hector Peterson, I wouldn't see my opportunity to be a stand against racism and violence when I teach. And having those two perspectives, well, without the conversation with myself, I wouldn't be here today trying to become the most trustworthy man and salesperson that I know. I promised you that this talk will change your life, and then I challenged you to have three responsible promise conversations, because I know that if you do, it will change my poem in honor of you, what you now trust yourself to do. Who do I now trust myself to become? When first you see the greatness through and through that those that love you see in you, that your co-workers trust you to set free, that your community depends on you to be, then who will you trust yourself to become? Then what will you trust yourself to do with your life? Because now, that's what I trust you to do. And thank you for trusting me.